In this video, we're going to prove the fact that the square root of 2 is an irrational number. We're going to prove it by contradiction. Suppose the square root of 2 is a over b, where the GCD of a and b is 1. That is, a and b have nothing in common. That means a over b is in reduced form. Remember that we proved the theorem. If the GCD of, say, a prime and b, b prime is equal to d, that implies that so that means that a prime over b prime is not in reduced form, unless d is 1. That implies that a prime over d and our b prime over d, I'm not going to argue with this time, but these are both integers, is 1. That is, a prime over d, d, I don't know if I said that right, these two numbers are integers. So a prime over d is an integer, and b prime over d is an integer, and let's call those integers a and b, and it's in reduced form. We can definitely reduce a fraction so there it has no common divisors. Okay, so su suppose that, this. Well, this means that a squared is equal to 2b squared, which is can be written as a multiple of b. Well, that implies that b divides a squared. That implies that b divides a squared. Okay, assuming, assume that b is greater than 0, then by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, spell this right, fundamental theorem of arithmetic, There exists a p in the prime, so let's just say there exists a prime p. There exists a prime p such that p divides b. I do have one major error. Assume that b is at least bigger than 1. Remember, b is an integer. We're assuming a and b are both positive. B is an integer, and again, I wrote it wrong. Assume that B is bigger than 1. Then by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, there exists a prime such that P divides B. And P divide, oops, B divides A squared. I'm just recalling that from here. Well, those two imply that p divides a squared. If p divides one number and that number divides a third number, then the first divides the third with no problem. Okay. But this is the same as p dividing a times a. And if p divides a product of two integers, and p is prime, that implies p divides one of those two numbers. Well, they're the same numbers. That means p divides a. Well, if p divides a and p divides b, then p divides our That implies that the GCD of A and B is at least P. And P is at least 2. 
Okay. P P is a common divisor of A and B. It may not be the greatest. That's why the greatest common divisor in A and B is greater than or equal to P. But this is a contradiction. Somewhere we said the GCD is 1. Now, we made an assumption that B was greater than 1. Now, assume that B is equal to 1. That implies from right here, that implies from right there, that A squared is equal to 2. But there is no integer that when we multiply it by itself equals 2. And after all, 1 squared is 1 and 2 squared is 4. So, to get 2, 2 of course is in between 1 and 4. So we're going to have to multiply a number between 1 and 2 by itself to get back 2. But no number between 1 and 2 is an integer. Okay, so when we assume b was bigger than 1, we got a contradiction. When we have that b equals 1, a doesn't exist. So that's another contradiction. Combining, this all shows that the square root of 2 cannot be written as the quotient of 2 integers. Well, by definition, this means the square root of 2 is not rational. It is irrational. This is a nice proof of the fact that the square root of 2 is irrational. Probably a proof you've never seen before. That's what this channel is all about. Showing nice proofs of theorems that maybe we already know proofs of. So come back and check out this channel from time to time, if not daily. So you get to see different proofs of old theorems. Subscribe to my channel, click the like button, see you guys in the next video. Watch and learn.